LRBAquatics.com Hello world, how's it going? It's your boy once again, LRB Aquatics, bringing it to you with another live video. Uh, some of you guys may have already seen it where I show Gary Lang's method of hatching eggs. And now it's only been a couple days, I've already got a ton of fry, super excited about that. And I wanted to do a follow up and show you guys what I do and also share with you some of uh, Gary's notes as well on how he does it. So let me go ahead and get you flipped over here. Oh, one more thing too. I know I told you guys yesterday that the seven color Nemo bettas were coming in today and for some reason USPS dropped the ball and uh, hopefully they'll be here tomorrow. So. They should be all right, being better as they came all the way from overseas, so I'm sure one day shouldn't be too bad. All right, let me get you guys flipped over here. So I've got a uh, fry in all of them, I think. Here are the Chilotherini campsi. You can see the eggs are getting super dark here. So these are all about ready to go. Now I did get some G Max, which is the Glossolepis maculosis. I got a couple babies of those, six already. And I ended up going ahead and taking them into the other tank. Those That happened yesterday and the day before. But today, there was actually a nice countable amount in both these that I could see. My girlfriend said there was some in here. Oh yeah, I see one swimming around right there. Those are the Bomani Melanotania. It looks like the Pygmaeas still haven't hatched yet. They still look kind of fresh. But I've been changing the water uh, about 75% of it every other day with nice new clean water like I showed in the other video. So with these fry, what you're gonna wanna do now that they've hatched is get you a little cup I just happen to have these paper cups. You can use a plastic cup. It all depends on your setup. There you can see I've got three of them in there. You kind of just let, let the uh, suction get them into the cup. This way you're not netting them and getting them stuck in a net and hurting them because they're really fragile at this stage fry food i think yes and i will talk about fry foods and all that here in a second so let me go ahead and carry these to a tank and these are g max those are the glossolepis maculosis and we're gonna go ahead and put them in in this 40 up here and big reason why i'm picking this 40 gallon here I don't know if you guys can see it very well, but if you look at the top of the water, see how there's a bunch of different, like, little whiteness to it all? That's not the glass. That's a bunch of paramecium all over in this tank. The good thing about having shrimp tanks are they make really good fry tanks because there's not fish, especially shrimp tanks without a filter as far as like a canister or hang on the back sponge filter yeah there's nothing to actually break up all the small organisms in there so as gently as i got them i'm going to put them in here there's actually a couple g max in here already there i go a little fishy there they go off into their new home now with this size of the tank too i can fit a whole bunch of them in here See if I can get them on camera. Oh yeah, there's a little one. Swimming right there. Yeah, tons of natural fry food in there. Now it's really important to feed these like pretty much as soon as they hatch. They don't have any oak yolk sacs or anything like that. So they do need food right away. And I do give them this golden pearl. Actually, I have a bag of it in here. I've got the vial Gary gave me, but it'll be better for you guys to actually see a bag. <clears throat> now wait two years. Yeah, they take a long time to grow. That's for sure. They're like a fine wine. And here's the food. Flip you guys over. 
Here's the food, golden pearls, that's what it's called. Go golden pearls, 100, 200 microns. So they do have different sizes of it. And it's just like a powdered food. And a lot of people, uh, a lot of breeders use that and really swear by it. I've been using it, it seems to work pretty good. Now I'll go ahead and share with you a little more of Gary's method on how he actually raises up the fry, some of his notes and all that. As far as mine, with those shrimp, since I feed the tetratropical color granules, uh, a lot of that dusting will end up going into that tank I just put them in. And um, this is with the tetracolor tropical granules. But the shrimp will clean up most everything and then the fry will just get whatever's floating at the top. Where can you get the fry food? I am not 100% sure. Best thing to do is do a Google search. You can find anything online these days. Now I'll flip you guys around here so you guys can read it too. So here we are at hatching eggs. Actually, let me go over here, my little desk with my countless amounts of notes. Notes, 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 notes. That's how I remember it all. All right, so here we go. Uh, eggs have hatched. He says usually takes seven to 11 days. It only took a couple days for me, which was great. But that is about normal from after they breed. So start feeding the fry. First foods immediately. That's what I did. And he likes to use two to five gallon tanks with 12 to 50 fry. Um, 50 fry in a five gallon, I don't know, to me will be a lot, but at the same time, as they get older, you'll have some, <laughs> need a microscope to read that. That's why I'm talking to you. I'll try to get closer. But anyways, um, that's why, like when they get older, you want to get the bigger ones out because the smaller ones will start becoming food. So space is good for the fry. And he does mention to note 2.5 gallons are easier to lose the water quality in a small aquarium, which makes a lot of sense. So bigger the water volume, better chance you have of not causing issues. A 10 is what he most often uses hatching a large mob of eggs. Now he really stresses the temperature degrees on the fry. Well, most of my tanks are around 78, so hopefully it doesn't cause too much of an issue with the fry. I've never had a whole lot of problem with it. And um, let's see, he does mention that the higher temperature will actually help them grow faster, which is very true. And add a few snails. Yes, if you don't have any snails or shrimp in the tank, you want to add something because they will actually help eat the excess food, which makes a big difference because if that little bit of food is so microscopic but it could still lay at the ground and fungus so that's really important so rainbow fish live at the top of the water and yes turn down the uh let's see they'll drown soon in the surf that you produce by heavy aeration yes so you want to green water is good for first foods vinegar eels but you do want to turn down the aeration because the aeration can end up drowning them. That's what he was saying pretty much in a nutshell. Let's see. Feed twice a day or more often if you can. You can get brine shrimp direct. In three to seven days, they'll be ready to eat a new brine shrimp. Your goal is to get them to eat live baby brine shrimp. <clears throat> As many of you guys know, I don't mess with baby brine shrimp. Let's see, also first foods alternative, golden pearls mix including cholera powder. I've never heard of that. Health food stores, spirulina, not as good as Corlella though. Astaxanthin powder, I haven't heard of these. This is a uh, brine shrimp direct, which really brings out the reds early in red color fish. Keep it in a tightly sealed container, freezer, blah, blah, blah. Go easy on the feeding. And if you want to read this more up, like more of this, feel free to pause the video after I put it up and all that stuff. 
But if you feed too much, definitely want to siphon off the bottom because you don't want to get fungusy. I usually like to wait about two weeks before I do first water change, which is smart. Since mine are more planted tanks and more natural, I can go longer without doing water changes. A lot of the food gets eaten by the snails and the shrimp. And then, yeah, just kind of raising them up. Once you get them up to around that size, then you're all right. I'm going to kind of skim down this a little bit. That way, for you guys who really want to read through it, I'm not going to read the whole thing on here. But if you guys really want to read through it, you can. <laughs> but yeah, the cool thing about it is with just a little work up front, you can have an aquarium full of constantly moving color. That's the cool thing about rainbow fish is you only need a few of them to end up with a huge, huge tank full of rainbow fish. And here's some other good references too if you guys like to check out this stuff. This is Rainbow Fish Organization uh, for more information on rainbow fish as well. So, all right, I thought I'd go ahead and share that with you guys, a little update on the rainbow fish eggs. Any last questions before I hop off here about the rainbow fish eggs and everything else? As always, I have my Friday night live streams, 9.30 Eastern Standard Time on Fridays. Where you can ask anything. All right, yep, yep, bigger tank, more stable, that's for sure. Keep Gertrude Fry at 74, 76 without problems, says Luca. Awesome, awesome. Need a microscope to read that? All right, I got to tell all that. All right, so there you go. Oh, wrong way. You can see I need to do recycling. Got a lot coming in. A lot coming in, a lot going out. All right, I got to go eat my dinner. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. May I learn something. If you didn't do it already, hit that like button. I would appreciate it. And until next time, everybody, hopefully I'll have that Sullivan Color Nemo pair tomorrow. I'm excited about them, and I, I'm sure they'll be all right. I know, I think he's a little more wor being worried than I am. I know how shipping goes, so what have you. So next time, everybody, peace. Do-do-do-do-do.